is alive. Welcome to Home Time with Pastor Tom Snyder. At this moment, we would like to thank Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church for being our gracious sponsor. And now, here's Pastor Tom with some announcements. Hey guys, this is Pastor Tom. I'm pastor of Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church here in uh, Hedgesville, West Virginia. Uh, we've had the blessing of preaching and traveling all over the world. We got radio programs, uh, Facebook Live, a YouTube channel, and you've tuned in to one of our archive recordings of our radio program. I hope you enjoy it, but more than that, I hope you are ministered to by it. So sit back and enjoy, and uh, we'll come back with you with a few messages at the end of the program. Amen. Now, I want you to get right into the, uh, to the song, into the message here. So listen, as Karen Wheaton sings this beautiful song, he'll do it again. If there's ever a time we need God to do it again, it's now. See, tonight you may be down. And feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you you can't get through. Right now it seems there's no way out, and you're going under. time and time again he'll take care of you and he'll do it
Hallelujah, you may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. And that's the thought that we're going to preach on this morning. If there is ever a time that we need God to do it again, oh, say it. What is it? What do you need? Amen. What do you need right now, this day, this hour, what you need God to do it again? I'm telling you, as a nation, as an individual, as a church, we need God to do it again. We go to the Bible for our reference. We go to the Bible to see in the past if God's ever done it again. And one of the, uh, I've been praying. Guys, I, I'm going to just be plain with you. I've been praying the last couple of weeks. I know the work that God's got in front of this ministry, uh, in front of me. It's, it's going to be heavy in the future. God has revealed this to me, that it's going to be heavy. There's a lot of work to do. And God told me that he'd be with me. And when he told me that, I began to pray this prayer. I said, Lord, give me the strength of Samson. Samson's was a supernatural strength. It wasn't a strength that he got from being in the weight room. It wasn't a strength that he got from some type of special pill or vitamin. This was a supernatural strength that came from God. In fact, I'd like to submit to you that chances are when you saw Samson, he probably wasn't no muscle bound, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Rocky type deal with great big muscles. It's possible, but I just just kind of believe he was a, a an average guy but he was on average in his commitment and in his covenant and in his covenant amen of course we know one of the things he had he had the vow of the Nazarite and one of the things was he didn't cut his hair he wasn't supposed to drink wine he, there was a lot of things he wasn't supposed to do and things he was supposed to do but the one that came to uh, thought was when you saw him his hair had never been cut amen uh, and when you saw Samson other than and that characteristic, he probably looked like any other Jewish man, Jewish boy at that time. But there was something different. God had given him a supernatural strength. And folks, I'm praying. I want you to pray that prayer with me, with the work that we've got to do, that God would give us a supernatural strength to see this through. Amen. And I was praying about that. And so the, the thought of Samson has been in my mind quite a bit the last couple of weeks as I've been praying. That's on a personal note. And then as I was coming up here, getting ready to preach this message, I, 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 I felt this call, do it again. And I went straight to Samson, verse number 28 of chapter number 16 of Judges. And Samson called on the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember, I pray thee and strengthen me, Hashoto, I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once the vengeance of the Philistines for my two eyes. My, my, my. Woo! He said, I pray thee, strengthen me. Strengthen me. One more time. One more time, God. Do it again. One more time. Pour out thy power. Let thy presence come on me. Strengthen me again, God. One more time. Do it again. Lord Jesus, we ask God that you help us, God, that you anoint us, God. We cannot do this on our own, God. We ask for a divine anointing, God. Somebody out there. They need this touch. They need this message. Somebody out there, they need to hear this message. Oh, God, anoint us to preach and anoint them to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, we don't know where Samson was at emotionally, but we got a good idea. He was in the dungeon. He was in the prison. We're talking about a man that was used to feeling the presence of God. We're talking about a man that was used to feeling the, the, the greatness, the awesomeness, the, the power 
of a mighty God. Unlike his brethren uh, that was going through the times of judges when they were being attacked by the enemy, especially the Philistines, uh, this man uh, in his lifetime, even in his rebellion, knew what it was like to feel the power of God. Oh, my ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I want to submit something to you. I want to tell you a personal thing that happened to me. When I was a young person, I grew up in the church. I grew up in a spirit-filled church. I grew up when my grandfather was a tent, meet, tent meeting preacher. He traveled the country preaching tents. He also went around the world doing missions work. I knew what it was like as a child, four and five years old, to go down them old sawdust trails. I know what it was like to go to the camp meetings. I was raised in it, ladies and gentlemen. I knew what it was like to sense and feel the power of an almighty God. And at a young age, at five years of age, God called me to preach. At five years of age, he called me to preach. I got on the stage for the first time at five and began to sing and testify. Amen. When I was 15 years old, amen, I, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, knocked down, filled, speaking in tongues, filled with the Holy Spirit, and begin to preach at that age. Uh, and listen, he, all through that uh, form formable times when I was being formed, when I was being made, when I was going through all this, the enemy was fighting me and tempting me and trying me. Amen. And, and you've heard my testimony before. You know what kind of personality that I had and what I got. Amen. I can't do something halfway. When I'm serving God, it's 100%. Amen. When I was serving the devil, it was 100%. And I, I, you know, I was up and I was down, but I, I, I remember sitting in class and the teacher teaching on the subject called evolution. And I remember her teaching it like it was fact that a bunch of goo in the zoo became me and you. And that was just one point that I remember. There was other times that my Faith was challenged in the school system, that my faith was challenged when I'd get around my friends, that my faith was challenged, and I was in a rebellious state, but I remember uh, sitting in that classroom when that teacher was saying that, and at the time, I was not in what you would, I was probably in what you would call a backslidden condition. And I was in that classroom, and she was talking about that, and, uh, you know, I, I was Joe Cool. I was Mr. Varsity Jacket. I was Mr., you know, Joe Cool. But something welled up inside of me, and I, I, I remember this happening. It was so real that before I could get it back out of my mouth, I stood up. I said, I don't believe it. I said, a bunch of goo in the zoo didn't become me and you. And she looked at me. She said, well, how did you get here, Mr. Snyder? I said, the God of the heavens and the earth, the only God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He created me in his image. And she began to mock me a little bit. She said, oh, that's just, a, you know, an old tale. Uh, how do you believe that? And I said, wait a minute. Why don't you ask everybody else in the class? Uh, amen. We kind of started a revolt that day. Everybody in the class raised their hand and agreed with me. But, uh, and I say all that to say this. Uh, amen. Once you have experienced Experience the genuine touch of God, the presence of God. Nothing else will do. Nothing else will satisfy. Amen. The, the devil may try to get you to believe a lie, but once you've been touched, amen, you know deep down. I'm going to tell you right now. Someone said, how do you know the Holy Ghost is real? How do you know the power is real? How do you know God still heals today? How do you know God still delivers today? I'm going to tell you how I know. I know because he done it for me. Amen. I know I may not be living right at times. I may sometimes be going in the wrong way. Sometimes might not even be in the will of God. But deep down when you've been touched, amen, you know nothing else will satisfy. I'm talking to somebody. Wake up right now. Amen. I'm talking to somebody. Amen. You grew up in it. You've strayed from it. You ran far from it. But you knew what it was like when 
when that Holy Ghost was on you. You knew what it was like when God was giving you that spiritual vision in those dreams. You knew what it was like when God was calling you out from among them to be separate. Amen. You knew what it was like. You know what the power of God feels like. Mm, Samson knew what it was like. He knew what the power of God felt like. But he went so far. He he'd struggled and went so far that he was in a place that they literally, he was, you talking about blinded, he was literally blinded. They poked his eyes out of him. The Bible says they made sport of him. And I've done a little research on this. Amen. Uh, when you look up the word sport there, it could very well refer to like in a sexual term that they abused him. They abused his body. Oh, we're not just talking about putting him in a dungeon and sweating his eyes out. I mean, they, this man took abuse beyond abuse. And he sat there, and the biggest thing that he felt was his betrayal of God. He let his hair, he broke his covenant. He let Delilah cut his hair. And they came up on him, and he wished not the spirit of God had departed. My Lord, I can make this a national message. I feel that this week, amen, we wish not. Amen, we, we, we wish not that the spirit of God had departed, and now we're in the dungeon. We, 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 don't, we don't understand. Amen, we're sitting here, and we're in blindness. And the only thing that we can pray is, God, one more time, just one more time, oh Lord, let me feel thy strength. Just one more time, let me feel your presence. I want you to know something. There have been many times that I've stood by the bedside of somebody and their body's been racked of cancer. Their body's been racked of a, of a pain as they're getting ready to leave this world. Amen. And I have prayed with them. Amen. And many times, I'm telling you many times, I've seen them have a great day, feel the touch feel a great touch right before they leave this world and God lets them feel that one more time I've seen people come, um, amen, in the services um, and get right with God and feel the Shekinah, feel the glory of God um, just one more time before they leave this world, um, amen, and I feel we need it now. Um, I feel there's some in here you need to feel the touch of God again. Um, we need this country needs it. You need it. I need it. Um, God, we need you to do it again because we can't do it. Um, see, you can't manufacture it up. You can't beat it down on the drum, amen. You can't beat it down on the organ. Amen. But you got to get down on your knees and you got to ask God to do it again. I heard a beautiful story just recently. It said back in the 1940s over in England, it was a certain uh, theological school. Uh, uh, the, the professor came in and he said, we're going to go on a field trip. England was full of all kind of beautiful sites, Christian sites, and said, we're going to go on a field trip, and they went to this place, and when they arrived, it was the house, it was the rectory of, of none other than John Wesley. John Wesley, he was a great revivalist, he, he was part of the Great Awakening in England, and especially in America, and, and he was a great Methodist preacher. He was the founder of, uh, of the Methodist. In fact, the word method means their method of praying. And this, this group of uh, young preachers um, went into this house of Wesley, and they were all struck by it. Uh, you know, most preachers, they, 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 they love history. I love history. I love to get into old houses. Uh, one of my favorite places to go is Mount Vernon. Uh, I, I like to go into an old house and see it set the Adam Stevens home right here in Martinsburg. Take the take your opportunity to go in there and see stepping back in time, the Morgan Morgan cabin, and so many other things. But these young preachers, they walked into this place and they were all struck at it. This was the house of Wesley, the father of modern, what we got today. Uh, uh, I mean, the, that, that awakening uh, was in large part was started by Wesley and Whitfield and his brother Charles and then passed down to, to the other awakenings and the other great revivals to where it's passed down to us. And, and Wesley is a huge part of it. And I, I'm going to say this, not 
not to be deteriorate, but the modern Methodist is not even close to the, Meth, uh, to the Wesley of old. Can you imagine if John Wesley was alive today? Well, these young preachers in the late 1940s, they were in this house and they were walking around. And they were looking at John Wesley's table where he ate, the desk where he wrote. Uh, they were looking at, at the library books that was in there. It's straight out of the time period. And they were all struck. And finally, the, the, the professor said, let's go upstairs. And when they went upstairs, they found uh, uh, his bed. And beside his bed was a place in the wooden floors. There were two spots in the wooden floors that was there. And he looked and he said, this is the place where Wesley prayed. And this is the place where he prayed so much that his knees wore out spots in the floor. So they, they got done the, they got done the um, uh, tour and he said, let's everybody go. We're going to go to the next place. And they got out to get back on the van or the bus. And he did a roll call and he looked in one of the one of them were missing. He, so he walked into downstairs and looked, and there was nobody down there. He walked over to the desk, and he walked over, uh, uh, looked around the corners, and there was nobody there. He walked up the stairs and began to hear praying. He looked up, and when he saw it, the young man was on the bed with his knees in the same place that John Wesley had put his knees hundreds of years before. And this young man had his hands up in the air, tears running down his cheeks, crying out, do it again, Lord. Do it again. The old professor put his hand on his shoulder and prayed with him. And finally he said, we got to go. Got to go to the next place. He said, but he'll do it again. If you believe, he'll do it again. That young man that he helped up was none other than Billy Graham. And oh, to God, as I'm preaching here today, that there would be somebody out there that would be like Billy Graham. Billy Graham said, give me the anointing of Wesley. Give me the anointing of Wesley. Do it again, Lord. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen in the government. I don't know what's going to happen in America. I can't promise you, uh, amen, what is going to happen the next couple months or the next couple years. But I know this, we need the God of the heavens and we need the God of the earth uh, to do it again. That he'll rise up a Samson-like spirit. That he'll rise up one more time. Amen, it's good to talk about Azusa Street. It's good good to talk about the latter rain. It's good to talk about the awakenings. Amen. But we need something fresh today. We need, we need God to do it again. We need men that will put their knees in the same spot where Wesley and Graham put their knees. All to God that he would send out a group that will cry and lift their hands up and say, do it again, Lord. One more time, God. I'm sorry for me drifting. I'm sorry for my sin. Be like Samson, God. Avenge me of my enemies one more time. Would America feel the Shekinah awakening of God's glory? One more time. Would we feel the hand of the Master on us? One more time. Would the church awaken? Amen. That our biggest events would not be bogged. Games. Our biggest events would not be entertainment. Our biggest events, amen, would not be mega churches, but our events would be prayer meetings in the fields, in the highways, in the byways. God do it again. Oh, God, raise up a generation. Oh, that'll lift their hands and they'll cry and say, I need the God of Wesley. I need the God of Whitfield. I need the God of Moody and Sunday. I need the God of my forefathers in America. We need it again in this church. We need it again. We need a touch. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, God. Right before you come, dear Jesus. Oh God, would there be a harvest? Start the harvest. And may it start in me. Oh, 
Oh, God, do it again. Oh, God, give us the power of the Holy Ghost. May there be quaking and shaking. Oh, God, God, give us some holiness. Oh, God, God, help us to be sick of this world. Help us, God, not to fornicate in this world, but help us to come out from among them and be separate. Help us, God. Oh, God, give us a holy generation, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation with a spot nor a wrinkle. God, do it again with signs and wonders and miracles. Do it again. May you only receive the glory. May you only receive the touch. Do it again, God. Oh, God, send us some old-time, old-fashioned, Holy Ghost-filled preachers that'll preach not their own words, but thine words. Do it again. Do it again, Lord. Oh, God, do it again. And Samson said, Son, yes, let me fill the pillars of the doorposts. And he reached over. They laughed at Samson. They mocked at Samson. Oh, they spit on Samson. Oh, oh, the enemies were laughing. He said, where is the God of Samson? And I can just see him as he began to put his hands on the pillars. And I believe he began to lift his heart. And he lifted his voice. And they mocked him. He said, listen, he's crying out to Jehovah. He's crying out to the dead God of the Hebrews. He's tired. He's crying out. Look, he ain't got nothing. He's defeated. He's crying out. And he said, Oh, Lord God, Jehovah, grant me the touch. Grant me the touch one more time. He told the boy, He said, You better get out of here, son. I feel the touch of the Lord on my hand once again. I feel the touch. They looked at him and laughed at him, and all of a sudden, he began begin to praise. He began to sing the songs of Zion. He sang the songs of Moses. And all of a sudden, the power of God began and the shackles begin to break and the chains begin to break and he began to push and he pushed and God give him that touch one more time. The enemies begin to cry. The God Jehovah is alive. The God of the Hebrews is alive. He is in Samson again. Ladies and gentlemen, our Jesus is alive. He's well, and he's looking for a people that he will rise up again. Hallelujah. Oh, God, do it again. Do it through me. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And it said in that day that he killed more in that one event. Amen. That he did his entire life. He wiped out more enemy in his last event. I'm believing God. Whether it's from a jail cell, whether it's from a barred church door. Amen. We are going to preach, thus saith the Lord. Oh God, do it again. Who's with me? Who's with the Lord thy God? Choose you this day. Do it again. God is going to do it again. Remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord. Hey guys, Pastor Tom coming back at you. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed the message that you've just listened to. I hope you were ministered to by it and that you'll be able to use it to minister to somebody else and help us spread the word around the world. If you've enjoyed this, if you've got questions, comments, or a prayer request, you can contact us at Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church Facebook page. And uh, if you would like to give a donation that helps us support all our media projects and our mission projects to help us spread the gospel around the world, uh, just see the PayPal link below. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.